that's kind of uh, interesting to see. He is uh, one of the older um, SoCal players. They have really strong uh, raw Pokemon trainer. So seeing the return of Pokemon trainer in this game kind of brought him back, I would assume. Hey, if my Pokemon got that much stronger, I'd be back out in the league too. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Ivysaur is an incredible character. Not just not just Pokemon trainers, Ivysaur alone. Like if Ivysaur was just a character like herself in the game, I think she would at least be upper like uh, bits here or like at least a high character. But uh, yeah, Pokemon trainer is really interesting to see how many players are doing well with the character, even though uh, you know Leffen isn't using uh, Pokemon trainer anymore. There's wishes. Pandarian, Ned, all showing what the character can do. Also, uh, in SoCal, we have uh, Sweet Tea and now Typhoon, too. Yeah, Pokemon Trainer, just one of those enigmas in the metagame. Sometimes people think really good. Sometimes they think, like, left and uh, not so good. <laughs> I think this is the dynamic of the character, being three characters in one. Like, it really depends on the, the matchup that you're playing, which style you'll see. It's gotta be hard to like really juggle because there are probably players that are better against certain character or certain uh, Pokemon that uh, you know. So it's probably always just like this mixed bag of you're never really quite sure of how your opponents are gonna react in situations. You gotta like find the one character that's uh, you know the right one for that opportunity. Just because you know, even outside of just the character matchups, the player knowledge and player matchups uh, really ultimately have a lot of uh, a lot to say in the results. That's definitely what makes Pokemon Trainer one of the more characters in general. Just like knowing that right Pokemon for that right situation, switching at the perfect time. And even the Switch Mechanic in general being so much uh, faster in this game, you see like cool things like, all right, I'm gonna throw you off stage with Ivysaur, switch to Charizard, and then just go, go up for a down air, like things like that. Pokemon Trainer. And Pokemon what? Trainer's coming out, starting with Ivysaur. No surprise from Slayer's coming out with Peach. And we are deep here in the Prime Saga Pools. And let's see who's going to take it. Pokemon Stadium's the matchup. Home field advantage going to Typhi. But Slayer's just no slouch. And, you know, I don't really think Peach cares about home field advantage. Also, that's his throw out hitboxes and win. Yeah, Slayer just seems like he's comfortable in any of the stages so far. But I, I, did, I definitely agree with the Ivysaur pick. It's because he has like really strong up air to catch the float. And if he does get one up there, you can chain it really well. Here we also, go, there's the chains. Yeah, there you go, it's a good start. Also has that great Razor Leaf too, to force uh, Slayers to go in the air to avoid it, and then he can go for his up airs and up bees. And of course, got those down throw confirms, up airs, and Slayers uh, getting a little more than uh, he cared to handle at, at the uh, early outset. But it's pretty even overall. Good Razor Leaf to cover himself back on the stage, but Slayers just floating so nicely gets the landing back here. Charger's now out on the field, and oh my god, a Mr. Saturn. Oh my goodness, the Saturn alone was scary enough, but then the Nutri got covered by Fortier. And That's one of those unfortunate situations. You had to spot dodge the Saturn in order to not get shield broken, but the Fortier trap was right there. All right, get the bullet seed out of shield. I haven't seen that move that much in this game. Doesn't do as much damage as before, but uh... I remember the Brawl days when I did like 27 damage. Yeah, 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 you just stuck in there. All right, the Charizard is out. This is a, okay, nice catch with both the L smash. Good stuff for him to take a, a stock with Charizard as quick as possible because he's so easy to get hit by Peach. Kind of just want him there to get the stock and then just go back to a more safe Pokemon. And I feel like as a Peach player, Slayer is, plays this float a little bit higher than the other Peaches and it kind of lends itself to being open to getting snuck underneath. Instead of that horizontal zoning game, it's kind of like that diagonal zoning game. And that's why we're able to see Charizard run, run, run under an up smash yeah. in that situation. But it might leave him open to IV source sneaking in there, throwing in those up airs like you were talking about. Exactly. Right now those Slayers find the pressure not giving Typhi much room to just get in and get his combo started. Off the stage again with the turn set up here, switches to Charizard, gets the fire breath, flame throw to make his lightning sleep. Alright. Trying to stay under the peach. Oh, there he's that up smash. See if he catches floating in a bad spot. Yeah, Typhoon's uh, keyed in on what I queued in too. He's just like, yeah, if Slayer's gonna give me that ground on the you know, on the low side, I'm just gonna run in and throw in that up smash and see if I can't steal one. So, Ooh, I wouldn't be surprised if I got an upbeat. Right. Yeah. Yeah, goes to the dash grab. Thought he could follow up after getting the flame breath a little bit too slow. And now Slave's gonna get this low percent combo, 46% already. 
Yeah, this time be having the battle from behind the entire game. It's not done him any favors. He's doing everything he can to try to battle back, but Slayer's just been one step ahead. Yeah, there it is. He's running in, you know. He's like, this is the play of running in and out smashing. But Slayer seems to be a little wiser to playing shield on the ground. Okay, trying to get the setup of the flame breath. Oh, no up smash out of shield. That probably was his best uh, option for punishing that side B. And now confirmation for this dock here. Slayer just racking up for sit. Getting his free punishes. Oh, a little bit too early on for Toad, but I do like the idea. Toad actually seems incredibly strong in this game. I've seen it kill like incredibly early off stage. All right, yeah, it's that go-to option, especially characters that kind of have that recovery and they have to commit to a certain pathway. Yeah. Slayer's taking the stock and convincing two stock, you know, just kind of in control that entire match. Typey did a pretty good job of, you know, finding some holes that give him some things to work with coming into the second game, but Slayer's, you know, managing the game very well, good pacing, and a very strong victory opening up the set. Surprisingly enough, I don't think we saw Squirtle at all in that match. Yeah, I thought you avoided it. Okay, but it's interesting, because I would have said that, you know, as far as characters go, Squirtle might be able to get the wheels turning on Peach just because, you know, the uh, the speed of the forward air coming out just kind of trying to break through the Peach wall. Um, two, but it might be just be a player, one, you know, we're talking about go. on one side trying to read your opponent and what Pokemon they're comfortable playing against. Maybe it's more, Ivy is more comfortable on the Ivy Star Charizard train. Yeah, I know Squirtle's incredibly light as well, so he maybe just didn't want to deal with the threat of dying early to a Peach Fair, even earlier than he would normally with like Charizard or Ivy Star. And then. Slayer just put up 115 damage in 20 seconds. Yeah. No big deal. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to Peach and Ultimate. You know, you, you whipped a move in my face. That's just free damage. Oh, uh, no, here we go. Up, up, special confirmed. No, not quite. Good DI out of that situation coming out from Slayers. That would have been a big pickup for Type B. Kind of what he needed to set the tone for the game. Now he's got a longer road to try to take the stock. And Slayer oh yeah. Sorry, it looked like he was trying to resist himself for the downer off stage, but uh, Slayer's just drifting back and forth at a really good time. Okay. Yeah, yeah staying crafty in his recovery, being as slippery as he possibly can. Back there again. Yeah, Slayer's uh, just waiting for him to whip it. I'd say move his punches effectively. Yeah, both players have the back air in mind, and uh, oh my oh, god, the trade's coming! Is. Oh, <laughs> going for the up air instead. And Ty be a little fortunate that he ran out of stage, but the trouble still continue. He has him in the up air chains now. And everything going right for Slayers. Oh, aggressive fair to get back to the stage. Only super deep off stage, but no, not able to get anything to connect. Yeah, the Charizard's just doing his best to get this kill, but I feel like he's going for a lot of uh, predictable options that Slayer's just waiting to punish. Probably an up smash. Oh, he did an up smash that time. He's trying to All stop right. a forward air. Yeah, he really wants the forward air to work. Oh, the snipe with the turn up. He's not going to make it back, even with Charizard. Probably should have switched in that situation, but maybe he expected to come back. But oh my goodness, double nair, 39% out of the down tilt. And kind of a mercy kill right there. Time he didn't really have anything going for him, so able to get a back throw and just restore some semblance of order. But Slayer's picking up right where he left off, putting out so much damage. Neutral air has been the bane of Type B's existence so far this set. Oh, punishes the Pokemon switch perfectly. That was like, that was so unfortunate. Like, do you hear the Pokemon trick? He's like, don't give up yet? No, <laughs> you gotta get forwarded right in the face, right when you think you're safe. Uh, Slayers, looking like a really